Descending from atop the highest mountains of pop culture and delivering the knowledge of media you seek, this is the Geek Peak Podcast. 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 Hello, heroes and heroines, and welcome back to a very special episode of the Geek Peak Podcast. I'm your host, Chris, joined by Brandon and Trent, and this week we're taking on a Thanos-level threat, a bracket to make things perfectly balanced, as all things should be. That's right, we're bracketing phases one through three of the MCU for your listening pleasure. What will we have to sacrifice to get our favorites to the top of the proverbial mountain? Whatever it takes. That being said, I'd like to welcome my two glorious co-hosts on who are graced with glorious purpose. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's going okay. on, man? This has been a long time coming. We've been talking about ranking these Marvel movies for quite some time now, so I'm glad we're finally able to do it. We literally had, I love the term analysis paralysis, because like we kept trying to figure out how we were going to do this. We were like, we're going to have to watch all these movies again, and then we're going to have to figure out... like how to rank them like do we want to do a bracket do we want to do a tier listing you know do, like how do we want to do this do we want to do a top five um so we settled on the bracket this time but uh we've got something special coming for you at probably the end of the year beginning of next year that will include phase four as well and uh then you'll see our definitive marvel rankings but for now this is something tasty for you all to gnaw on so prepare for arguments <laughs> um with that being said let's give the obligatory spoilers warning on all the movies we're gonna oh, be talking Jesus. about Jesus, three <laughs> yeah it's like it's only been what a decade um dumbledore was killed by snape um i want to give you a heads up check out all of our social media stuff you can find all our links at linktr.ee that's two e's sounded weird sounded like one long e tr.ee slash geek peak um also we have a youtube account this video is live on youtube that's youtube.com slash geek peak pod you can sponsor the show and help us pay for our expenses to make this content patreon.com slash geek peak pod you also get sweet discounts on merch you get a little extra goodies here and there um speaking of merch if you want to get some swag then go to geek peak Geek Jesus Geek Peak Pod <laughs> dot Threadless dot com. Geek cheek. Did clap somebody him, geek cheek swag? swag? <laughs> Did someone say swag out of the cheek? Come over here, yeah, Samantha. Let me word. show you these geek cheeks. <laughs> I'm about to clack, clap those geek cheeks. <laughs> Oh, God. Anyways, uh, if you don't mind, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and that is a great segue because we have a contest going on until August 4th, 2022. If you review our show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and you send us a screenshot or some type of confirmation on any of our social medias, then we will put you in a raffle and you can win some sweet merch. We'll let you pick out a shirt design and that will come to you for free. Yeah. Um, two other quick notes uh, for that anniversary episode. We really want audience p participation. So if you're listening to this um, and you enjoy our show, we'd love for you to leave a voicemail telling us either your favorite episode or a favorite moment of an episode or a recommendation that you really liked or one that we helped you dodge um, from just this from Geek Peak. We'd really appreciate that. So uh, if you if we like it, which we probably will, then we're going to put it on our two-year anniversary episode on August 8th. Now, the phone number for that is going to be in the detail in the description of this uh, podcast in the text, but it's 813-551-1693. Additionally, we have a second contest going where you can leave a voicemail to imitate the intro of this show. So the 
<laughs> Greetings from atop the highest mountain. <laughs> Try your best. <laughs> and uh, if you leave us one of those, we're going to pick a winner on that, and you will be the intro for that episode. So definitely, you know, throw some throw some uh, respect on that real also, quick. If you want to make it your own and do something completely different with it, I highly encourage it. Show me that shit. I want to hear it. I highly encourage someone imitates uh, Jason Segal's character from Forgetting Sarah Marshall when he's doing the Dracula musical. <laughs> but, but, but I specifically, want a word like William Shatner. Welcome to the Rocket Geek Man. <laughs> Wait, what about William Shatner? <laughs> Have you not heard like his Rocket Man? Like, <laughs> oh yes, yes. And I How think can I not? It's gonna be a long, long time. <laughs> it brings me around again to find I'm not the man they think I am at home. Give me something like that. Something really weird and out there. That would be dope. So yeah, we we would love it if you want to leave us a voicemail. Um, keep it less than a minute. That's all we ask. Um, yeah. Now I do want to mention one last thing. We're at 73 reviews right now on Apple Podcasts. If we hit 100 before August 8th then we are going to drink something absolutely foul. So whatever you got to do to get us to 100, whether that's stealing your friend's phone and rating or leaving us a review, however you want to do it, uh, it's actually reviews only, not just ratings. But if you do that, we will drink something disgusting on the two-year anniversary episode and you will get to hear our disgusted reactions to it. Can't Yay. wait. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um <coughs> All right, let's get into drinks. I've been talking a lot. Trent, what are you drinking? I'm drinking uh, t something classic, Tito's soda water with lime. Ooh, counting mm -hmm. carbs. Oh, yeah. Counting going calories. To beach, going to the beach this weekend. Nice. Very nice. You, you honestly can't beat a good vodka tonic. Yeah. <clears throat> and Tito's is the best shitty, not shitty vodka, but it's better than It's shitty. like that's the lowest good. grade I'll go, basically. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Well, Brandon, yeah, do you got uh, something more exciting than that, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a little bit more exciting personally. So I'm drinking an Elysian Brewery Altered Contact Tart IPA. This is out of Seattle, Washington. It's a 6.8% American IPA. The can, first of all, this is what got me on board. I showed you boys this a little while ago. It's got this dude like hooked up with like all sorts of wires and stuff in some kind of like deprivation, sensual deprivation pool or something i don't know uh. originally i got this i was like that reminds me of stranger things when we were going to be covering that but i also had that like 80s skating themed cans where i felt like i had to do that instead but this is a delicious beer um i'm sure you've heard of elysian brewing before they do space dust they've also done those pumpkin beers that they have like four packs each year the uh the wolf one and man those are all good i love space dust and this is just another win for elysian brewery this is delicious Brandon, now that we're coming into our last month of summer, how excited are you for a nice pumpkin beer? Ooh, can't wait. It's my favorite holiday. I love Halloween and everything about that season. I know. I'm so excited. God. We're going to have to shake it up, man. We're going to have to reinvent the wheel this Halloween, this October. It's true. It should it's be true. fun. Let's go bobbing for apples. <laughs> oh, okay. No. That's how I lose my fucking teeth. <laughs> All right. Bobbing for mini shots. I That I, like I will that. do. I like that, yeah. Um, all right, so I've got a really cool, of course, I picked it because of the can art. Um, show you guys real quick. This one's called A Conspiracy of Lemurs. I like to move I it, like move that. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is from Tripping Animals Brewing. Didn't you guys have Tripping Animals on the show before? I feel like somebody I did. Uh, I don't know if I have. Maybe it's a familiar. It's from uh, Doral, Florida, which is in South Florida near Miami. Is that Doral or is it Doral? Doral. <laughs> no, no, it Doral. is. I, I swear. I swear it is. I'm not even bullshitting for once. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, so it's a collaboration between Tripping Animals Brewing and also um, Beat Culture Brewery. I don't know where they're from. But um, yeah, a Conspiracy of Lemurs. It's a sour ale with passion fruit, pineapple, strawberry, and black curant. Or curant. I don't know. 6% mm. uh, alcohol. And, you know... It's good. Uh, I don't think it's my favorite sour in the world, but it is pretty good. And I, I mean, the can art is freaking awesome. The can yeah, art's can dope art as hell. Sick. Their eyes are holographic. Like I see that, and I like so. that. That's the I best thing that the craft brewing industry has had on, or had, that's the best thing that craft breweries have done to the industry. 
bringing out art to their beers rather than actually just having most basic labels you've ever seen. I'm kind of uh-huh. surprised Budweiser. more. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised more um, liquor companies have not followed suit with that, with like really, yeah. really cool. Like not cool. You don't have to change the bottle design, but just the labeling. Yeah. Like one of the big draws for me was like when I buy Angel's Envy is I think the bottle just looks fucking awesome. You know? I, I buy same, Tito's like, like, during Basil Christmas Hayden's time too, becomes... Though. Oh yeah, Basil Hayden's as well with the strip of mm-hmm. uh, wood, like the barrel strip. I buy Tito's during Christmas time because it comes in a sweater. <laughs> I don't blame enough. you. I don't blame you at all. That's that's cool. Um, all right, so we are going to be skipping music this week because I have a showing of Nope this evening that I'm going to nope. as soon as we finish this episode. So um, I will let you know how that is in our next episode let's get into it yeah i mean we got a lot of movies to cover here so let's just get right into this uh now a couple of these films we did they are going to get buys there are not enough movies to fill out a full tier list so let's just start right at the beginning here excuse me bracket uh first one ant-man and avengers age of ultron easy peasy no cap my boy paul rudd (laughs) <laughs> greatest to ever do it let me tell you about avengers ultron don't even fucking remember it because it sucked as a movie worst avengers movie hands down worse than civil war <clears throat> that's my argument wanda and pietro boring ass characters they had to do an entire ass fucking 12 episode show to make me interested in wanda again fell in love with the robot not an interesting subplot for me very awesome villain james spader's fucking awesome waste of a villain i like paul rudd I think he fits in well with the MCU. I don't think they gave him much to work with in Ant-Man personally. I don't like the villain in Ant-Man, and I think the best part about it is when they go subatomic. That being said, I still think that it's better than Age of Ultron. Yeah. Oh. So on a rewatch of Age of Ultron, I kind of appreciated it more, but yeah. only because of I agree. Tony's it's not as bad. Yeah, only because it's not it isn't necessarily the movie's not necessarily I don't think it's made better. But because of Tony's premonition of what was to come and the fact that you kind of did need something like that, even though it did turn into Ultron. You know what I mean? I think part of the flop for me was like the end of the first Avengers or maybe it was the movie before um, Age of Ultron, whatever was released before. But you remember it was like, oh, shit, like Wanda and Pietro are about to be like Mm -hmm. such strong villains. And then they were just kind of whatever. Like, I remember that. Yeah, it was like an after credit scene. Yeah, I like, been Iron Man 3. It, is that the original Avengers was so good when it first came out, and this yep. was just such a letdown after it. Totally I agree. Ant Man, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> also, Brandon, I will throw this out there. I actually like the Wasp character. Oh. Or not not the Wasp, Yellow Jacket. I liked him as a villain. And I liked the I, I liked know. the fight at the end of Ant Man with fucking Thomas the Train set. Don't like care what fight. anybody says. The whole cool. like I'm evil because I'm around subatomic particles. That is a that, that is bad. Why is Hank Pym not evil? I thought he was just evil because he was seeking power at any cost. He was saying that he was being corrupted, or someone said that he was being corrupted by the subatomic particles. That he was kind of like a with. Horcrux. I I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite my head canon to say that's not what happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we all agreed. Ant Man. Yep. Yep. Ant Man moves Easy on. All right. Round. Let's get to the next one. Thor versus Captain Marvel. Okay, this one's hard because this I is hard haven't because seen both Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> because no. I heard about how bad it was, and I also would, did not necessarily like the first Thor that much. I'm uh, the only one who liked the first Thor, apparently, because I actually legitimately liked Thor. I thought so it was cool. Boring. I thought it was cool. It shows Asgard. We get Natalie Portman, who I love. Chris Hemsworth does a great job as Thor. We get introduced to like a lot of characters in his universe, like Heimdall. Like all the ca- the cast and crew is sick. We also get the scene where Hawkeye has the decision to put Thor down for good and doesn't do it. Love my boy Hawkeye. The Fucking scene that Hawkeye's awesome. in for a total of twenty seconds. Pulls Love his it. Bow up and then he's never in the movie again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna say Thor because the next time this either of these movies get put up against something, it's gonna be an easy pick. So it doesn't really matter. For- I do think Thor is better overall, even though I think I- I'm not. A- I'm not the biggest fan of the first Thor. I'm also not the biggest fan of Captain Marvel. 
Um, the villain however, in Thor is better. Uh, Loki? You want to know yeah. who the you want to? Well, Loki and the Destroyer. It's like those robot things. Yeah. Ah, the yeah. Destroyers. Whatever. The Destroyer I, was sick. I could literally care so much less about the. Like, Here's the villain of Captain Marvel: Amnesia, Men. No, it's, it's strong man. <laughs> I don't even know who the villain is in Captain Marvel. I haven't seen I Thor say, since like 2010, so I have no. Yeah. I don't remember much of that movie at all. I like the twist, at least in Captain Marvel, where you think these shapeshifters, these are the bad guys, and it turns out that they're not, and they end up being fun characters. I think that movie gets shit on a lot more than it deserves. Still don't think it's that great. I also was never that interested in Captain Marvel as a character because she reminded me way too much of Superman, which I'm not into. Uh, I get that. So, kind of like the the ex machina, Deus ex machina character. Um, but name one scene that's as iconic in Captain Marvel as shatters coffee mug on the ground. I'll have another. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. It's a good scene for sure. All right, Thor's moving on. Next. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 versus Ant-Man and the Wasp. Boy, howdy. This is a blowout, in my opinion. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is so much better than Ant-Man and the Wasp. That movie sucks ass. Okay, I thought you were going to go the other way, because I know you hate on Guardians 2. But... I love Guardians 2. Chris is the one that hates on Guardians 2. Uh, I do. I think Guardians okay. 2 is fantastic. I'm in the middle. I don't think it's fan It's definitely not better than the first one, but Ant-Man and the Wasp sucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i think like i think the villain in guardians 2 is not good not that kurt russell's not good he's awesome but the actual villain ego is stupid well, he's like a celestial I like when they talk about that i, in, I just uh... think it's so stupid how they present it i just am not into it it reminds yeah, me that like... episode when rick has sex with the planet and then rick and uh and his his daughter beth they're having to like make a civilization while Jerry and the kids are trying to camp. Like that's what Ego's whole storyline reminds me of and I hate it. That's I like really Ego funny. personally. I never Ego's thought about like that comparison. One of the first MCU villains that actually is relatable compared to like all this the I'm evil because I'm evil and I have an evil plan. It's like okay dude, cool. Very exciting. Bro <clears throat> anyways, I'm gonna go with you though because Ant Man and the Wasp, as much as I don't really like Ego as a villain Wasp or uh, fucking what even is that character's name? Phantom or something? Yeah, the, that was dumb. The white teleport. The power was sick. Character was dumb as hell. Like I was so, so pissed. Yeah, I can't remember the name. You yeah. know what's funny <laughs> is I had food poisoning when I went to see Captain Marvel from Steak and Shake, and so I had to leave the theater and I went home and I watched Ant Man and the Wasp. <laughs> oh, what a trade off. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um. The the villain's name, I'm looking it up, uh, but I do like the actress who played the villain. Unfortunately, they didn't give her a shit because that character was just so... I can't. I don't know if I like the actress or not because I, that's, I think that's the only thing I've seen her in as far as I know. I didn't recognize her before going into it, and why, why would I like her after that? She didn't do anything. The end of this sets up... Uh, Ghost Ant is the character's name. Ghost. Yeah. The end of this sets up Ant-Man being in the quantum realm during the snap, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm okay got it um they just did a bad job of telling that character's story too because in my opinion like i i actually feel like her story could have been very compelling but they didn't spend enough time actually even talking about her or giving her any screen time as uh anything but a masked character fighting ant-man yeah. and the wasp like so it's like there was no relatability there you didn't give a fuck about her that's how um, I thought about the uh, Taskmaster in Black Widow. Exactly same problem. It's like, I'm supposed to have an emotional connection with this character at the end of this after what? Like, what? <laughs> what is supposed to have hooked me? Um, so, yeah, I'm going Guardians 2 because there are some really damn good scenes from Guardians 2. But as a whole... Guardians 2 gets so emotional also with the death of Yondu. That still yeah. makes me tear up. My problem is when I it's the same problem that Age of Ultron has compared to the first Avengers is Guardians 2 versus 1. Like the first one personally. was such a high note and then the second one I felt like just it, it's not even that it was bad. I just did not appreciate it the same way. 
it's just it's it's written differently it's not meant to be as like fun in this romp through space it's more emotionally tied and it actually has a lot more character growth um for Fair the main cast well we know where this also. is going to happen when You're guardians 2 comes up against its next movie yep true we have, a, have an argument there so uh, -huh. uh next one black panther or Captain America, the first Avenger? Easy. Not a fan of the first Captain America movie. Black Panther, top 10 Marvel movie. Black Panther for sure. Killmonger is an awesome villain. Yeah. I feel like the Red Skull was disappointing. Killmonger is the only good thing about Black That's not true. It's the best part Whoa. about Black Panther, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely I... the best part about Black Panther. I this think is... that movie is just okay, in my opinion. Really? I think it gets a lot more hype than it deserves, personally. Um... That whole yeah, world want... is fascinating to me. Yeah. Wakanda's awesome. Wakanda is so cool. Um, it's just, it's the Lion King again. It's Hamlet again. It's the same story. Oh and it gets my old. God. I, yeah. I got a fucking stories better than Ant Man and the Wasp. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason That's these a movie tropes. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a yeah, reason these movie <laughs> There's a reason these movie tropes keep getting reused. Yeah, yeah, but after you see it so many times, it just it's not as good. Like it's the same Well, thing I've, like, on, I've only I've only seen it Avatar. once. I've 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 only seen a lot of Marvel movies once and I feel like I I I have a better um not recollection, but a like a more fond memory of them not rewatching mm -hmm. them all the time actually that's a lie i watched black panther again after chadwick boseman died okay wait yeah. guys i gotta jump in this is sort of on topic since we're talking disney properties apparently there was a uh two family brawl at a uh, magic kingdom today and someone was hospitalized at it because they were waiting in line at the fantasy land flight and this lady had left her phone in, in a, like a little electric wheelchair at another ride. So she stepped out of line and then another family wouldn't let her get back in line with her group. So the second, <laughs> the group who was not allowed to reunite with their, uh, the lady waited outside of the theater and then brawled with them at fucking magic kingdom. It's the happiest place on earth. Let's go, baby. How long do you think it took security personnel to get there? How long? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're asking me that question, I'm assuming it took them a while. They just let them fight it out for a bit. How long do you think? Just throw a number out. Minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Two. Two minutes and you had security right. on them. Damn. Disney's on their shit. Yeah, fair enough. Except for when they made Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, sorry. I, I just got that notification. I was like, Jesus, what happened? So so wh where are we at? <laughs> so we were at Black Panther, first event oh, in Captain America. Yeah. I think, personally, Black Panther does get one over on Captain America. I think it's a good film. I do enjoy it. I think it does Wonder Woman, but better, personally. It also came out before Wonder Woman. Definitely does Aquaman better. What the fuck does that mean? Oh, Black Panther. You're talking about First Avenger does Wonder yeah. Woman better. <laughs> okay, I'm talking yeah. about Black Panther does Aquaman <laughs> like, better. Like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just out here, bro. Um, and I also really like how they characterize Steve Rogers in the first Captain America, where he even in basic training, he jumps on the grenade, like showing how selfless he is. Yeah. Um, so I do. This like character is just kind of fucking goody two shoes, too boring for me. Like he gets really good in uh, Winter Soldier and like Civil War. Yeah, because you you've taken that good guy character and like transplanted him into a situation where it's like the lines of good and bad are super blurred. Yeah, mm -hmm. morality is gray. Yeah. Um, but I get that you have to do that. You have to make him goody two shoes for a while, but I don't have to like it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I actually, I personally really liked, uh, I really liked Captain America, the first Avenger. Um, I'm going to go with Black Panther on this, but I do want to say my piece that I love the World War II setting, and I just thought that was a really cool place to have um, an Avenger, like, involved in. Uh, you know, because Tony in um, Iron Man 1, he's like, selling weapons in like some kind of middle eastern conflict so like i loved that you know you kind of got the juxtaposition of cap in this very clearly good versus evil war you also get some kind of indiana jones tropes with red skull using the uh the nazi occult division to mm -hmm. try I to don't find like red skull. skull though to be fair i think he's a lame villain he's lame but he didn't have to be 
I guess is like he could have yeah. been really cool. But He's way better yeah. in Infinity War. <laughs> yeah, it would have been better if they hadn't killed him in the first one and then had him be a recurring villain for Captain for Hydra. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, such is life. Um, yeah, I'm going Black Panther. I mean, I fucking love Killmonger. I think he's so sick. I love Chadwick Great Boseman's villain. Black Panther, and the world building is very, very cool. All right, go in the next round. Black Panther's moving on. We have Iron Man three and the Incredible Hulk. This is Iron Man three. Don't don't even Hulk try. Smash. No, Hulk, Hulk is smash. Hulk smash. Garbage. Hulk. That movie is awesome. Hulk. I love Ed Norton as the Hulk. Hulk it. Oh my god. I wish he would have stayed. Do anything. Agreed. I, I like him better than Hulk. Mark Ruffalo. Me too. Mark Ruffalo. I don't. Is Mark Ruffalo it. gives it more of like a. He's actually like scared to like you can tell he like doesn't even want to like bump into shit like when he's like in the first avengers movie like he's that's more the writing any point. that's more the writing than the acting dude i don't uh-huh. understand how people hate on the incredible acts like hulk because it's fucking sucks that fight scene at the end is fucking awesome it is against, cgi dis- oh, it's so gross it's disgusting looking. against the abomination loved it yeah it looks disgusting dude also the mcu it's also the only film not actually done with Marvel's like main unit, it was like being made by Universal, so it's completely an outlier from everything else. And it yeah, was, it was one of those so good. Really looking at it, no, you can tell just looking at it, it looks fucking garbage. It was one of those weird like um, licensing things. Six point six on on IMDb. It's that's not way awful. Too high. No, it's not, not too high for it. <laughs> well, guess not what? Awful at all, Iron Man three was... was fucking trash. Yes, agreed. Wrong wrong iron man 3 is a fun film that it. doesn't take itself too seriously in terms of keeping in touch with everything else going on in the mcu it's just a okay fun run i will say or iron man i will say a lot of this has to come with my expectations being destroyed from the trailer yeah and the mandarin subversion being, yeah oh i'm sorry were you a really big fan off. of the mandarin in the comics no, I'm not saying Shut that up. I was. Yeah, who cares then? It's allowed to be changed. <laughs> it was a bait and switch, and they made it fucking goofy and stupid. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. I think it fits perfectly with it. Villain was incredibly fucking stupid in Iron Man 3. At least the villain in The Incredible Hulk made sense. It was basically the same exact archetype as uh, Tony Stark versus... Um, what was that guy's name? Obadiah Stane. Yeah, it was the exact same thing as that, except in I also and I felt like he was a good villain either. He was I a great villain. He's a great first villain. Oh, dude, the mentor turned traitor. Yeah, that's, that's also a, a great trope. Whole, yeah. It, yeah, it's a good trope. But his whole plan was like, I'm going to take over by killing Tony Stark, and then he's going on a rampage to the city. Yeah, that's going to really work out well for you when you want to take over the company. You're going to be arrested, dude. He, dude, like they say in Endgame, whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> people just don't forget that he's like attacking buses full of civilians that's not okay yeah i mean honestly i agree but you know whatever i personally think in the incredible hulk trent is having technical difficulties hulk is moving forward a spot that's ridiculous but the incredible hulk is definitely my my champion here um that's, we have that's insanity Dude, Iron forward. Man, Iron Man three. The one scene that stood out to me is that the one where he gets drunk and fights uh, Rhodey. Yes. Okay, that yep. scene stood out, and then also the entirety of his house on the cliffside falling into the ocean stood out. But everything else about that movie. Cool. The last fight when he's just swapping in between different mech suits because that's no. So cool. I don't think that's cool. I don't like that. Straight up. Why is that not cool? I just I don't know. I just don't like it. I didn't think it was cool. Uh. I mean, I don't know. Is Iron Man... Wait, the fight in the... Is that the... When they like are doing the um, showcase at the World Expo or whatever? No, that's two. Yeah, that fight scene is way better than anything in three. And people rate three better than two. Like, what the Three's fuck? Get the two. fuck Dude, out of here. Three? Oh, Gendry Tartakovsky wrote that fight scene in the fucking Koi Pond Flower Garden. That's why it's fucking rad. You know who wrote the fight scene in Iron Man 3? No one fucking knows because that person doesn't work in Hollywood anymore. I didn't know Gendry Tarkovsky even wrote that fight scene in 2. It didn't make an impact on me at Which all. Which fight scene are you talking about? The whiplash fight scene? At no, the no. Yeah. The, the, one, the one with all of the the drones that... Um, oh, at the expo? Justin Hammer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, at the expo. Oh, also, um, 
got guy whatever his name is uh he i loved him fieri as, no not fieri <laughs> oh sam rockwell sam time? sam rockwell i loved him in iron man 2 um mm -hmm. but iron man 3 i felt like uh there was almost no, there was so little of Tony fighting in the Iron Man suit. And yes. then Pepper is the I one like that, that fights the guy it at the end. It shows that he's not just a man uh, in a suit. His that ingenuity, movie was that a is a fucking his disaster. You're I, kidding I, yourself I, if you think it wasn't. I, I understand that you think oh, the Hulk is good. That blows my mind. You're the like fact the one, that you're the two the, people on this planet that like the Hulk. The fact that I needed reinforcement on Tony's ingenuity when the entire first movie he's in a fucking cave with the Taliban building his arc reactor and then building an Iron Man suit. I don't fucking need any more. I don't need any more explanation. I understand that he's very brilliant and he doesn't need a suit. He can build whatever he needs. He can work his way out of it. But you know what I don't need? I don't need a bait and switch on a villain and I definitely don't need the bad guys to be exploding human beings. That's a dumb villain and I hated it. And I stand I by that. Kind of goofy. I agree with you on that. The movie's just fun. And okay. I, I'm not going to well, take. I won't take away from that. But I, I villains for me are a strong, strong indicator of whether or not I'm going to like something. And you don't like Volume Two. Okay, we're moving on to the next one. Hulk is winning somehow. I don't know how it happened, but there he is. I guess. Fuck me. <laughs> uh, next one. We're going to have to get rid of one of these at some point. So here we go. Iron Man One. Iron Man Two. Iron Man 1, dude, yeah, mean, kicked off you. the whole MCU. Thank so God, amazing. Yeah. I was so worried. <laughs> I mean, oh, no, there, I don't I think like, Iron Man 2 is that good. I actually liked I like the it. Whiplash character. Yep. Mickey um, Rourke. I thought he was cool. Uh, but Iron, the first Iron Man is just so iconic. It is. That's if it. You, it everything off. If you can make God bleed, people will cease to believe in him. And then the sharks come. <laughs> there will be blood in the water. All I have to do is sit back and watch as the world consumes you. I thought Mickey Rourke was a good villain. And the scene where he's fucking racing and Whiplash is introduced is fucking awesome. Also, again, Sam Rockwell is underrated as, like, the arms dealer. He's so funny. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Iron Man 1, you're moving forward. Good job, boys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next one Doctor Strange or Thor the Dark World gee I wonder what's going oh, on this, <laughs> this is my chance a chance for Thor the Dark World to prove its merit <laughs> now, Dude, this Sean is... from Metal Core Nerds I've been seeing on like his social media lately has been praising Thor Dark World yeah he had a whole I'm episode like... about why Thor the Dark World is misunderstood and I'm sorry Does Sean does he but no. dislike anything <laughs> I mean, good on you for being a po like positive attitude, but like, goddamn, that's like bottom of the barrel. I've rewatched this movie in the past year. I fucking hate this film. It's so ass, especially I for agree. how cool the villain could have been. Yeah, like, like you've the got ether and everything. It's kind of cool. It's a, it's a cool concept, but it's just not done well. And here, also, it's a really me. bad follow up to what Thor's doing after Avengers. Yes. That is true. That Chaos is true. Elves. That could have been sick. Yeah. But no. And you know what I really liked in the first Thor? Is when he was fighting. And like they like when he's fighting in like all the, the nine realms. And he's like flying around like that. He's got that dragon pursuing him. Um, that's in Thor 1. What do they have in Thor 2? They have him have like a 1v1 fight with a tall guy. That's the <laughs> That's the comparison point. Plus, his entire band of warriors that he fights with, apparently no one gives a shit. They even make a joke about it in Thor Love and Thunder. So, you know. I'll say I'm not even, like, super high on Doctor Strange. Um, I, kind I of thought the movie was unique and different. But like, the scene where he's astral projecting for the first time and seeing all this crazy shit is one of the coolest scenes in any Marvel movie, in my opinion, just visually speaking. Yeah. Overall, though, the movie itself, like... Mads Mikkelsen's villain is not that great. Dormammu's cool. I like the way they handle that, where they don't they outwit him rather than just straight up try to fight Dormammu because that would mm -hmm. never work. Early, early. Um, well, I guess I can't. I guess th there's exceptions to this rule. I was going to say, introduction movies outside of like Iron Man and Guardians and Shang Chi Black, and Black Black Panther have not been that good, in my yeah. opinion. The origin mm -hmm. stories are always tough. I really like <clears throat> Shang Chi too, though. 
Like it, talking about newer characters I've introduced. Yeah. I like Shang-Chi right up to the very end. But we will get to the next one. Kaiju so, fight. Ugh, it was so good <laughs> up to that point. We now have Avengers Infinity War. Good luck, whoever's up against that. Oh, who is that? Is it Ant-Man? Man, that's tough. <laughs> All right, can we just, before we kill Ant-Man, can we just talk about how good Michael Pena's character is? With, oh, like, it's the best. Because, I mean, originally Edgar Wright was going to direct this, so he's writ- he wrote some of these parts, and that's one of those parts because it's like those jump cuts like he does in Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, Baby Driver, Scott Pilgrim. Uh, we, we're big fans of Edgar Wright here. Um, Peyton Reed did a good job with Ant-Man one. I thought, I thought the story was fun. Um, could have been some, there's, you know, some downsides to it, but overall I really, really it's, love it's got movie. its flaws, but I will say like, I didn't expect anything from an Ant-Man movie and I was surprised. I thought, there I don't think anybody did. There. I don't yeah, think anybody did. Good All right. Well, infinity war clearly wins this one. It's not even close. Yeah. All right. Next round we have Avengers end game. Versus Captain America, the Winter Soldier. That's a hard Dude, one, but yeah, I really like Winter Soldier, but I'm gonna go End Game just because they put a perfect bow on fucking what is it? Twenty four movies, twenty three, I think. Twenty three. Yeah. I mean, End Game was a, they, they nailed that ending. Now, Winter Soldier. It's unfortunate that they're that these are seated against each other, uh, but I'm gonna go End Game. It is unfortunate they're seated against each other. Endgame is more of an event than a movie. It is the cherry on top to wrap everything up. It does a fantastic job with it. But The Winter Soldier is a better film. And I personally think it has more rewatchability as well. Agreed. I've rewatched The Winter Soldier four or five times since it came out in theaters. I've watched Endgame like once or twice. And... As I've good personally as... seen Endgame more. Endgame gives me way more emotion. Like, see, Infinity I... War does that for me rather than Endgame. Look into his eyes and tell him <laughs> that the sacrifice was not worth it. I the know. Endgame, I know. Though, but... Say it. So Look into his it eyes and say it. <laughs> Listen, there's so much finality in Endgame where it makes it me makes me almost not want to watch it multiple times over because I'm satisfied just having seen it a couple times and like now i'm good yeah. i know how yeah. it ends it, it it ends up perfectly i'm i'm happy with how it ends and rather than just something to throw on in the background or just something for a movie night i would definitely put winter soldier there all right well i'm not happy about it but it's fine also i just got to say the russo brothers doing like a spy thriller <laughs> uh marvel movie is sick and i don't really think they tried to kind of replicate it from black widow but i don't think they've made another movie that's like civil war Endgame is Winter Soldier, like, or I'm sorry, but besides, yeah, besides uh, Winter Soldier, but Endgame is literally like we're gonna put every cameo. Like Winter Soldier doesn't need a ton of cameos to be an amazing movie. Endgame, obviously, because it was the culmination of everything, had all those cameos, so yeah, benefits from it. But I, Civil or uh, Winter Soldier is like one of my favorite Marvel movies. Also, you get Nazi computer guy. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Next round, we have the Avengers versus Thor. Ooh, that's a hard Avengers. one. Avengers. This is not hard at all. Are Avengers, no cap. <laughs> you know, I was going to say, in what way is this hard? Yeah. Get Thor out of here. Bye. Let's just move swiftly on. We now have Captain America Civil War versus Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Hear me out. So I feel like I liked Captain America Civil War more than a lot of people. But Guardians definitely takes the cake for me on this one. I'm voting. I'm so surprised by I'm, that. I'm voting Civil War. Spider-Man's introduction. We get a lot more Black Panther. I think this was Black Panther's introduction before his movie. <clears throat> um, we also get you know Ant-Man in a team team fight, and we get him as massive Ant-Man. There are some downsides to it for sure. Um, My but- biggest complaint is when they all fight each other. I feel like the worst possible setting is like an empty fucking tarmac they- in the airport. Yeah. I don't know. Waited dumb. to do Civil War until more movies came out. Where you, instead of having like seven people on each side of the fight, there's like twenty different heroes on each side of the fight. And they you should know, have made it like a so two part. Cooler. They should have made it like a two part movie, kind of like it yeah. could have been Infinity something to Endgame. cap off a phase like Infinity War and Endgame. It yeah, I agree. Yeah. I did and really just, like the the plot line about Bucky killing Tony Stark's parents, and that I thought the 
finale of it was actually the strongest part of the entire movie, even oh, yeah, more so when, than the heroes fighting. When Bucky and Cap are fighting Iron Man is completely amazing. So the worst all day. The worst <laughs> part about it is the reason that there's a civil war because that's fucking stupid. Like Agreed. you're telling me, Cap and Iron Man can't fucking fi- Cap and Tony can't fucking figure that out. They I mean, could have come up with something way better than that. And if you're gonna use that as the plot device, like the registration of heroes and shit, first of all, Incredibles did it first. If you're gonna use that, <laughs> then it make them actually have better arguments as to why they're fucking fighting each other over it. You know, like I just that was so weak to well, me. Well, well, one that is comic accurate, but two, I felt like it was a good segue from Winter Soldier, where Captain saw how fucked up like the in- inside of like what is supposed to be a good hero organization Shield was, and obviously that corruption can permeate any political body. So that was his whole argument. Whereas Tony was reckoning with Age of Ultron, so they both had their like. You know, they're anchors to their argument, but I, I get what you're saying. Like, it could have been kind of spelled out better. But that fight at the end, so fucking sick when they're switching so, off, throwing the shield. I'm oh, surprised you, you chose Guardians 2, Trent. I'm Wait, no, that's Guard. Did you say Guardians or Guardians 2? You said Guardians. Guardians no, 2. 2. Oh, I switch. Turn uh, go! Let's go, Benedict Arnold. <laughs> that <laughs> sorry, is Brandon. I don't agree with. I think Guardians <laughs> 2 is definitely better than Civil War. Um, sorry, Brandon. The Guardians universe is just so much fun. That, but yeah. I, I will I will concede here. I think Civil War is still a good film. I mean, I'm not going to knock it for sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, Spider Man getting introduced kind of put it over the edge for me. Also, T'Challa is better in Civil War than he ever was in his own film, in my opinion. Wow. Well, I feel like more emotionally does motivated. Focus more on the villain than him. Yeah, I yeah. feel like he is mm. more, way more emotional. Like, I'm more emotionally involved with Black Panther in Civil War personally. So that makes Same. sense. Yep. All right, okay. next one. We have the original Guardians of the Galaxy Trent versus Black Panther. So we were just talking about T'Challa. We were just talking about Guardians. This one's easy for me. Mm. This is Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians yeah. is so good. I also Guardians of the Guardians. Galaxy is a, is a Marvel film where you could show it to anyone and they don't need to know anything about the MCU and they'll still enjoy it. It was a it was a great. It was it was a very like it refreshed my palate from the MCU when that came. Yeah. Out. I think the villain in um, Black Panther is better, but I think pretty much everything else about Guardians is better. Agreed. So I'm going Guardians for sure. All right. Next, we have Spider-Man Far From Home versus the Hulk. Don't even fucking try me. (laughs) You know what I'm thinking. Hulk smash. Edward Edward Norton sends his regards. (laughs) Nah, Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio is great. It's fucking awesome. That yeah, literally awesome. that scene where he is like uh, when Spider Man gets hit by a train and far from home. It's incredible. It's literally ripped out of the Spider Man two game when he fights Mysterio in the fun house. And I loved that. I yep. loved it. It's I thought it was so sick. People hate on that movie. I think that movie's fucking awesome. The only problem is he's in Europe. Yeah. That's the only criticism. The- the ending is really good too when they reveal he's Peter Parker. And you get the fact that they mm-hmm. introduced the multiverse with J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Yeah. Which sort is of. fucking sick. Uh, yeah, this movie's this movie's rad. All right, next. Far From Home's moving on. Uh, Thor, Ragnarok versus the original Iron Man. People are not going to like my answer on this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Thor, Ragnarok is a much more fun, ridiculous, action-y, hero-y, Marvel-y movie than Iron Man. I mean, obviously, you got to give credit to the OG that started it all, and Tony Stark sure. is fucking awesome in the original Iron Man, but better villain, better setting, more characters that I That's like, more fun, more, better more music, bright, more color, more visually pleasing. Yeah, Taika Waititi is a fucking awesome director. This yeah. is the best Hulk film that exists. Agreed. <sighs> that I'll agree <Yep>. with. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And the best and Thor film, probably. And the best Thor it film. Is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going I'm also going Ragnarok. I mean, Iron Man paved the way, but you just have the benefit of the evolution of the MCU films and the style, and it's just a lot you're right, it's a lot more fun. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. yeah. Jeff fucking Goldblum. <laughs> All right, next we have Spider Man Homecoming versus Doctor Strange. Okay, I think we're all on the same page yeah, on this. Spider Man. Yeah. Homecoming. Thank yeah, God. I love Doctor Strange. I actually think it's really cool. I love that they got a horror director to come in and do that movie, but Spider-Man Homecoming is fucking awesome. 
Homecoming is one of my favorite Spider-Man movies, period. I think it's so good. Spider-Man's the one character integrated in the MCU is amazing with Iron Man. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man's the one character in the MCU that every single one of his movies has been amazing. It's true. All right, quarterfinals. We have Avengers Infinity War versus The Winter Soldier. (sighs) For me, it's Infinity War. It's it's so good. I hate saying that, but like if I had like top three, it's like those are both in my top three. Yeah, it's a tough one for sure. I mean, The Winter Soldier is a great film, but Infinity War is just the culmination of everything and the snap. It is everything. It, yeah, the snap's everything. You finally get like actual consequences. It's the stakes. first time you really you really get them yeah. in the MCU. Yeah, um, like sitting and in for that reason watching alone, that happen and just watching the crowd's reaction as heroes started fading away was intense. You don't Mr. get a happy Stark, ending at all. Mr. Stark, like, I don't want to go. What do you There's... mean you don't get a happy ending? Thanos is out on his farm chilling. He's having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Everybody was like shook after that movie. Well, and then also we had... seeing Thanos get introduced and fucking mowing Hulk down mm-hmm. and killing Loki. And I liked his disciples. They were fucking strong as hell and awesome. Like the one yep. guy who had telekinesis, great. I boy. like him too. Yeah, I'm a big yeah. fan of that guy. Yeah, yeah Infinity War is moving forward though. I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah. All right. The original Avengers versus Captain America Civil War. Original Avengers. Yep. OG Avengers, that, yeah, that music swell himself. when they did the 360 around all the heroes uh, back to back. That that lives rent free in my mind. <laughs> so it's cool. So That's my all secret. Right. I'm always angry. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy or Far From Home? Ooh. For me, it's Guardians. I like Far From Home a lot. Um, <sighs> again, Guardians is just so much more rewatchable in my opinion. Guardians also has my literal favorite scene of any MCU movie. Right at the very end when um, Quill's holding the Power Stone. And he gets that vision of his mom, like, take my hand, Peter. But it's Gamora doing it. God, that breaks me. I think the Guardians had a heavier lift than Spider-Man No Way Home did. Um, just based far on the, from home. Far from far, home. Far from home, excuse me. Uh, based on the amount of characters they had to introduce in like an entirely new world. As much as I love Far From Home, and like this doesn't detract from it at all, I think I'm going Guardians as well. The music's fucking awesome, and all the characters are just uh, chefs. Whoever kiss. decided to put '70s rock music into like this futuristic space atmosphere, you're a fucking genius. It works. It works. works. Who, who directed that? James Gunn. James Gunn, baby. Yeah. And he did Suicide Squad too, the better one. Love yeah. him. Oh, by the way, yeah. I picked Guardians. Yeah, at a boy. All right, Ragnarok or Homecoming. I'm going to pick Ragnarok. I'm I know Brandon's going to pick Homecoming. I'm also <laughs> picking Ragnarok. That sucks. You guys suck. Homecoming. I know so you good. love Homecoming. And I've, and they did a good oh, job really? of making Vulture cool. They did a very good job of making Vulture cool. And Michael they Keaton's did. fucking Michael awesome. Michael Keaton killed that role. The hard also, thing for me is it's like it's hard for me to compare them individually as movies because Ragnarok is the best Thor movie and Spider-Man 2 is the best Spider-Man movie. You think Far From Home is better than No Way Home? No. No, he's talking like Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi. Oh, first. oh, okay, got you. I was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I personally also let's let's ignore the fact that they polluted the Sony verse by putting Michael Keaton as the Vulture and Morbius. Um, <laughs> I, I legitimately think that Homecoming is phenomenal, but Ragnarok again, it's just a more fun movie. Like as much as I love them introducing Spider Man, my favorite is No I Way think Home. Homecoming is so fun, also, just because it's it's less of a superhero movie and it's almost like a teen comedy with superheroes in it. They it's do true. It so well, I I but, do really but, like you know, it. The majority wins. We'll we'll go Ragnarok. Uh, semifinals: Infinity War or the original Avengers. Oh, that's Infinity War for very me. Hard. As much as I respect the original Avengers. Infinity War just does it better. Well, Chris, you with your your um, fetish for villains, you have to say Infinity War. <laughs> I know. Yeah, mm. <laughs> it is true. It is true. Yeah, but I felt like there was a the one thing that Avengers had going for it is there's a much more like much larger emphasis on the 
Chitari and like large scale battles. Infinity War, the battle is more of like a backdrop. I'm just going to shit on Infinity yeah. War for one second. They totally had uh, Bruce Banner turning into the Hulk in the previews and then they changed it. There, there was Hulk in the previews, and then they changed him to the Hulkbuster suit, which annoyed the fuck out of me. Hmm. I wish they would have put somebody else in the Hulkbuster suit. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Next round. Infinity War is moving forward. We have the original Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor Ragnarok. It's oh. Guardians, right? it's Guardians. Bro. Taika versus Gunn? It's tough. I know. You it's kidding me? These are, these are two of my favorite movies from the MCU, period. Not just through phases one through three. Um but for me, again, Guardians is one of my favorite Marvel movies, period. It may be just my favorite Marvel movie, period. Um, and it does kind of what Ragnarok's doing anyways by just having these wacky adventure out in space. And I think it does it better, personally. And the way that they introduce all these characters that you never would have cared about from the comic and made it so that you fell in love with them after only one movie, Masterclass. And the music! Chris, what are you picking? Not the music is so good. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. I mean, I think, like, personal opinion, I enjoy rewatching Thor Ragnarok more. I've seen it more. But Guardians is, like, right there with it. So I really don't know. Like, I think I'm going to go. I mean, this is more nostalgia's sake. Just because of, like, you already have characters that I'm in love with from the previous films. I think I'm still going to go Ragnarok because I love Hela as a villain. Like, a lot of people don't really care. Yeah, like, a lot of people don't care for her. But when she shattered Mjolnir, I was like, this is a bad bitch right now. And then, like, the way that Thor... Like, the way that Thor ends up, like, getting... uh, What's his name? What about Valkyrie, though? Valkyrie is not even that good of a character. Huh. Dude, I like Valkyrie. I love Tessa Thompson. And her scene where... It's like it goes like Zack Snyder 300 for a second where they're fighting in that crazy that twilight. That's a cool image. Yeah, that scene's fucking insane. <laughs> but what I was saying is like, uh, I, I forget what his name is, like Sarder or something, the fire god that he brings at the end. Sarder, yeah. Sarder, like, like there's just so many cool things that they introduce. And my only issue with Guardians is the end where you have the um, Nebula core or whatever. Nova Corps, mm-hmm. I felt like they yeah. were just kind of completely useless. That's Whereas, the point, kind of. Yeah, but like everything else in, like everything in Thor Ragnarok, I felt like played. Like even uh, what's his name, the Rock guy, the his the, name. the Kiwi <laughs> Rock guy. Yeah. Like I just like all of the characters, and I like all the main cast of Guardians, but there are characters that I just like don't care as much about. So. For that, I'm going Thor, but I that's a very this is probably the hardest choice we've had. This is also the hardest choice for me. Um, okay, highlights: Guardians, uh, one of the best Marvel movies to come out around that time. Best one of the best Marvel movies. Pe- period. It definitely was refreshing. Thor Ragnarok also kind of cured me of my MCU fatigue. I like Hulk a lot. And they did him so good in this, so and they fucked him up, in my opinion, in Infinity War. So I'm gonna go Thor Ragnarok. Sorry, Brandon. Break of my heart. What sucks is I feel like those two movies are easily in my top five, though. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree like, for sure. Like we've done a good job of pairing down to like the best of the best because all those like those two, Infinity War and Civil War, or and um. Jesus Christ, keep saying that. Winter Soldier, those are all top four movies for me. I would agree. And now we're going to have to put up the two uh, that we have here. That's Jesus Infinity War God. and Ragnarok. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go Infinity War. It's too epic. I agree. I'm still going Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> you can. That's fair, but Infinity War is just too damn good. I mean, they both have so much rewatchability that I, like, honestly, I don't know. I've seen both. Those are probably my two. That and Civil War are my, like, top. Those are, or, Jesus, I said it again. That and Winter Soldier <laughs> are my three most rewatched Marvel movies. So I'm kind of like, you know. Now, I will say. Infinity War. Put, 
if you put Infinity War versus Guardians there at the end, if Guardians somehow beat Ragnarok, I was going Guardians 100%. I know you were. I, again, it's more watchable in my opinion, and yeah. it's something that you can show anyone. They don't need to know anything about the MCU, whereas Infinity War, you do need to know a little bit because you've got all these stories. But who the fuck is watching these movies without watching the other I MCU agree. movies? That's, that's what makes Guardians of the Galaxy more accessible, though. That's true. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah. But uh, Infinity War just has, outside of everything else that's amazing about it, way more emotional resonance at the end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Thor Ragnarok, absolutely amazing. Like, the just the aesthetic of that entire movie is so attractive to me. But Infinity War, like, my only problem with Infinity War is legitimately how they do Hulk, which, okay, all you Marvel writers, apologists who are like, they did Hulk exactly how they meant to. Okay, cool. Keep your opinion to yourself. Don't care. Yeah, not a um, fan, personally. <laughs> don't care. Blocked on Twitter. Um, but, uh, Stop but yeah. Stop people on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not until this you. not until this episode comes out. I'm not. <laughs> um, but yeah, like overall, I mean, those two. I feel like those two were going to make it to top four regardless. So I think this was the natural ending. Most people listening to this probably expected is that a majority of people probably thought Infinity War would make it to the end and win. Somebody's now, punching air about Dark World now. Even though Infinity War Sean. did win, do you guys want to give your favorite Marvel movie of of these that we've talked about today, real quick? Even if it didn't make it to the end, yeah. Again, personally, mine, Guardians of the Galaxy. That is my favorite MCU film. I think my favorite is either Ragnarok or Civil... Or Jesus, God! Winter <laughs> Soldier! Captain America, Winter Soldier! Say his name! Uh, I just love like the spy action, you know, thriller category. Yeah. The one I've honestly rewatched the most is Endgame. Mm, I'm surprised. I that. really, really like Endgame a lot. Oh, yeah. I just like right. seeing everybody come together and just watching them be beaten down and depressed and broken. So for none like of our four favorite five movie years. is Infinity War. I wouldn't even say I wouldn't <laughs> even say that Endgame is my favorite. If I'm just yeah. giving something objective that like I would pick over Infinity War, it'd probably be Endgame. Um, so what's yeah. your What's your favorite part of Endgame? I'm curious. Um, the, the Tony snap. Scene. Ah, what about you, Brandon? Yeah, it's the Tony Snap easily. I mean, that's just so iconic at this point. My favorite, personally, I love the Tony Snap. Don't get me wrong. But when fucking Mjolnir goes flying and Spider-Man web slings onto it and then, like, in really succession, cool. Cap picks up Mjolnir and everyone's just fucking screaming in the theater, <laughs> I will never forget that moment. Like, that is cinema gold for me. They literally so played sick. that every MCU movie that's come out in Phase 4 they play that moment with the audience reaction in the trailer, like in the movie before the movie starts. <laughs> it's so fucking awesome. It's All right, guys, so Chris has to go see Jordan Peele's new film. Nope. Sci-fi comedy horror nope. thriller. All right. We're going to climb off this mountaintop. We'll see you next week at the summit of the geek peak. Come and get your love. Peace. <laughs>